Good morning. morning. This is the second Sunday of Easter. We continue to celebrate the fact that indeed he is risen to new life and everything is changed. We read how Jesus insists on appearing to his disciples. He will not leave them grieving his loss, but celebrating his life. Thank you for sharing in this time. Please take note of the announcements in the bulletin. The uh, calendar for the week ahead. Faye Schmiesing continues to be hospitalized in St. Cloud. Um, A schedule for when she comes this way is still kind of up in the air. So continued thoughts and prayers for her in her recovery. Welcome back, Kurt. Good to see you in your recovery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from Sundays and Seasons, an introductory paragraph for this Sunday. In spite of all we have heard and all we have seen, it is often hard to believe. Because it is hard to believe, we will invest ourselves in the Easter mystery for 50 days. Because it is hard to believe, John the Evangelist will provide sign after sign celebrating Jesus' victory over death. Because it is hard to believe, the risen Jesus will return to us again and again in the mystery of Holy Communion, inviting us to touch and taste his presence, offering us peace. We'll begin with the brief order for confession and forgiveness printed in your bulletin. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God, and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the gift of the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our opening hymn, 376.
Greetings from the one who is and who was and who is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the first fruits of the resurrection, grace and peace be with you all. We pray together the prayer of the day. O God of life, you reach out to us amid our fears with the wounded hands of your risen Son. By your Spirit's breath, revive our faith in your mercy and strengthen us to be the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. First lesson today is Acts, verse 5, chapter... I'm sorry, chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. Here they are. (laughs) When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so he is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 126 in unison together. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our second lesson is Revelations. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings of earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving as his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and on his his account all tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is come to the and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Please stand. This is the Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, 
and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Sisters and brothers, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 126 is a psalm of praise fit for Easter. Let everything that has voice praise the Lord in the sanctuary, in the firmament, for his deeds, for his greatness. Let the trumpet sound and the lute and the harp ring out and tambourine and even dance, strings and pipe, clanging cymbals, clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord, because indeed he is risen. On a slightly different note, in 1939, World War II was raging in Europe. The Germans had one successful campaign after the other. Poland, France, and Winston Churchill was convinced that his next target was England. So they devised, they called it the Battle of Britain. It was mostly consisted of an air battle to reduce the resistance of Britain for an invasion. England decided to evacuate women and children and some of the elderly out of the greater London area to protect them, relocating them to places, tent cities in some places, in some cases, to the countryside where things would be safer for them. They actually even gave it a code name, Operation Pied Piper. By the end of the program, three million residents of the London area were relocated into the countryside. In 1971, Walt Disney used this historical background for a movie entitled Bedknobs and Broomsticks. To protect the children of London, we follow the adventures of three children from the same family, Charlie, Carrie, and Paul, who are relocated to live with a woman named Ms. Eglantine Price. The children soon discover that she is a witch. Not a bad witch, but a good witch who wants to use her magical powers to help England in the war effort. Miss Price decides, and the children eventually are convinced that they should help her. So Miss Price decides that they need to go to London to get one more important spell, substitutionary locomotion. And they're going to go to London traveling by way of an enchanted bed powered by a spell cast upon one of the bed posts, the bed knobs. As they're getting ready to go, Charlie, the oldest, probably close to being a teenager, doesn't want to go. He's absolutely convinced that bed's not going anywhere. It's inside a room. Eglantine Price sings a song that Charlie is at the age of non-believing the age of not believing, the fact that children grow up and stop believing in magic and other things. Well, encouraged by a hissing black cat, Charlie jumps on the bed just in time as it magically disappears and travels safely to London, and the adventures continue. The age of not believing That phrase could be a subtitle for lots of our Easter Sunday scripture readings. 
The women go to the tomb early on that Saturday morning with spices to anoint the dead body of Jesus, even though he told them three times that after he was buried, he would rise on the third day. They find an empty tomb. They hear an angelic messenger tell them that Jesus is alive. They go and tell the disciples. The disciples don't believe them. They call it an idle tale, crazy talk. Peter runs and looks into the tomb and sees the emptiness of it and goes back wondering. Did he believe? Well, in today's reading, we find them still locked behind closed doors, locked behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. Fast forward all the way to the end of Easter and past Pentecost. I normally don't want to rush Easter. I want us to celebrate Easter for all seven weeks. But our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles show us a different set of disciples. Pentecost has happened. The gift of the Holy Spirit has happened. They have gone into the streets of Jerusalem to proclaim Christ as the Messiah. And as you read through those early chapters of Acts, you see the boldness, the braveness, the conviction of the disciples. Peter and the other disciples are thrown in prison. They uh, get out. They preach. They teach. They even have the power to heal some diseases. They're brought back into prison, they're let out again, and they go right back to the synagogue to preach about Jesus. They're told to say nothing, and they say, no, we must obey a higher power. We must obey God rather than any human authority. What happened between that Easter Sunday and the Acts of the Apostles so bravely and boldly proclaiming Christ? What happened to that age of not believing, Easter happened. We read in Luke the story of the two disciples walking home to Emmaus on that Easter Sunday, grieving the death of Jesus, and Jesus, the risen Jesus, joins them, walks with them, and talks to them about the scriptures that predicted everything that happened. And they come to recognize Jesus finally when he takes the supper bread breaks it, blesses it, and gives it to them. And they recognize Jesus, and they hurriedly rush back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples. In John, in today's gospel, we read the disciples gathered again in that upper room with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, and Jesus will not leave them that way. He comes and showed him, shows them his hands and his side and offers them peace, and they rejoice. And Thomas, Thomas gets a bad rap. They all doubted. He just wanted to experience what they experienced. He said, unless I see him for myself, I will not believe. And that's why the first week after Easter is always this text. One week later, Jesus shows up again, and he shows himself to Thomas, and Thomas has the great proclamation, my Lord and my God. The age of not believing comes to an end for disciples, and they do amazing powerful, bold witnessing to the Lord. What has changed? What is different? What has happened? Easter happened. Jesus walked with the two disciples to Emmaus so that they might come to understand the truth. He appeared to Thomas and the disciples so that their grief and fear and doubt could be turned to joy and hope and faith. Easter happened, and everything changed. So what about us? Jesus declared to Thomas and the others, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Believe. Are we blessed because we have not seen and yet have come to believe? Can we join Thomas and boldly proclaim that Jesus is my Lord? And my God, or will we live our lives wondering, doubting, in an age of not believing? Will the alleluias and he is risen indeed fade away right along with those palm branches that we waved a couple weeks ago? We spent six weeks in Lent getting
getting ready for Easter, and we will spend seven weeks celebrating Easter to start. We celebrate Easter for 50 days because in spite of all we have heard and all we have seen, as Sundays and Seasons says, it's sometimes hard to believe. We will read the stories over and over again because as the Gospel of John declares, these stories are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Because sometimes it's hard to believe the risen Jesus will return to us again and again. In the waters of baptism, reminding us as we come forward from com- for communion to dip our fingers in the waters, renewing that covenant of baptism each day, and in the mystery and the gift of communion, inviting us to touch and taste his presence and to receive from him his promised peace. O oh Lord, let Easter happen to us this day and always. Amen. The hymn of the day is in your bulletin, Victory in Jesus.
confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world, signs of your gracious, loving presence, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and Lord, and in his name, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share the peace of the Lord. receive the morning offering. Almighty and merciful God, holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Remember that Christ has died for you. Christ is risen for you. Christ walks with you 
all the days of your life, and Christ will come again to take us home. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is prepared. All are welcome. Come and receive the presence of Christ for you.
Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and strengthen you and keep you in his covenant promise of life, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world, and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our sending song, 384, verses 1, 2, and 4. Thank you. 